Psychedelic Sundays. <laughs> um, you know, I think um, starting at the beginning, you know, I think, you know, for a lot of, a lot of times, the, you know, the first time you take uh, mushrooms, the first time I actually took mushrooms is um, I got them from my friend from San Francisco and I was like scared to take them. So I, I just like didn't take them. Um, like we, we just bought them. We were going to do them. And then like I had them for a while. And then like I was like, I had some time where like I was I had the house to myself. So I was just like, fuck it. I'm going to do it. But then I did it. I had an eighth and I didn't do the full eighth because I did it in a T. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then so I did it in a T, which was, which was pretty good. But the thing was, is like, it's kind of funny because I I didn't really know what to expect. So like the whole time I was like, is it hitting me? Am I, am I high yet? <laughs> and I just, I just remember like what, like in my peripheral vision, like I had this cone in my bed, uh, in my mm. bedroom, uh, like, you know, like a street cone. Uh, and then, so like, it was like, on it was just like in my peripheral vision and then it looked like it just went down and went back up, like, like just like spontaneously. And I'm just like, oh shit, I think it's kicking in. <laughs> and, nice. And then, um, uh, for some reason, I was looking in the mirror, and then, like, it was weird because then like my hair was like turned into like horns, and then I remember like looking at my mouth, then like my mouth disappearing. And then, like, look, like looking into the mirror, and then I was like, "Oh, my mouth is gone," like <laughs> thinking it. And then I'm like, "Oh shit, I can't, I can't talk. Like, like I have no mouth." <laughs> Anyways, it was just like weird stuff like that. But which is funny because I just read an article on my trip. Like, I was just reading different articles, and one of them was for the ancient Maya. The the headline was for the ancient Maya. Cracked mirrors were a path to the world beyond, and like they did, like these elaborate interaction, interactive like um, hieroglyphs. Like they were written backwards, and they had like like things in them. So like when you cross the threshold, like you could see what the inscription is or something like that. Right. And so like I guess they would also do this when they're on mushrooms, <laughs> which is you know obvious <laughs> very interesting it might be a way to send a message across yeah right? so to speak because i think it's... i think you know before we we get really deep into it like there's a broad um perspective of like the missing link or or something that makes a lot of this poetry sacred uh, narratives make sense is adding the psychedelic you know ingredient and that, like, I remember one time talking to my cousin, and um, it's funny, like, in different circles to have different conversations about, like, how much you you could, like, tell somebody, you know, not like it's a bad or a good thing, but so it could be heard, you know? Right. <laughs> and so we were talking about, like, ancient aliens, right? And so, like, this is, like, a step from, like, he's not really religious, but, like, He's like, oh, but, you know, we kind of had the conversation about, like, ancient aliens. Oh, it makes more sense, like, if it's a, a higher intelligence, then it's, like, this, like, um, a visible guy in the sky, you know, like, folk, folk, mm. folklore or fantasy, you know? Uh, like, science fiction seems more, more real in, like, um, the imagination. But I think, too, because, like, all of this is connected within, like what we know about like data nothing gets like erased it's always there so like the the dream time or the every win like has like all the information and all its different possibilities already recorded within the whole system and it's just like expressing itself in different ways right so like thinking about 
that and I just remember in my head telling him oh but you know what makes even more sense is that it's not like physically like aliens it's like happening deep within your own brain you know like inner past outer truths like this this is this is not like a hallucination seems like something um different but i remember liking how they framed it as true hallucination like it's like a hallucination that's tied to information that's non-local um Hmm. and you're able to like decode it and um pick on these different strands of what 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 is there because there's been a lot of uh human progress that's been um developed within dreams or and or um hallucinations and what was interesting too what i mentioned in in um the chat was um just bri- really briefly um uh there was a translation of um some of the indigenous like back in the time talking about them using mushrooms and different regions had like different terms but there were one one of them was the little mushroom people and mm-hmm. basically they were asking it for like divide like advice or um like deviation like to predict the future and um according to that thing too it was pretty accurate like most of the stuff that like they got was like information that uh turned out to be true or and or like roundabout ways of you know what i mean like they one guy saw his death and and right. and then he ended up like dying you know fa- fairly within the time frame mm. <laughs> uh one also too was like <laughs> supposed to go to war and went off to war another one like you know like most of the stuff was uh pretty accurate but anyways it's just interesting how and that's like the not the only way they or anybody uses them but that is like historically one way um to use it kind of like um to gain information you know mm-hmm. um from it uh, from communication with uh, a little per- a little voice uh, within it you know um, a lot of the terms there are uh, you know the little saints um mm-hmm. uh referring to like you know a, a mind that's communicating to you <laughs> Yeah, I think um, that's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, the the one um, I was when I was putting together the uh, PDF, the one that kept I I just kept like, are we serious right now? Is this is this what really is going on? Is the one about uh, Maria Sabina and her uncle? And at first, I don't know how many times I've read this, but I didn't catch it until I was working on the PDF. Mm-hmm. But it says she was eight years old. Like, just imagine how crazy it would be in our modern society. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, an eight-year-old going out into the woods, getting a mushroom, mm-hmm. and then coming back with a fucking cure for some disease that's killing somebody. Like, that's yeah. insane. Like, yeah. That is insane. But I think, yeah. too, <laughs> how that only works is that that is, like, uh Well, I know. I, 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 yes. Right. Well, I mean, there is definitely something at work there. And I think it is, uh, you know, my whole my whole thing is to to relate it back to, you know, something that's physical, more real. Yeah. If mycelium has this network throughout, you know, the ecosystem and it's it's literally like it running things. Yeah. It knows every it knows everything. So, of course, if it's going to if it does communicate with you. If that's what we're talking about, then these things are going to be, yes, it's going to know these things. And, you know, if you have the right relationship with it, of course, it, it's going to give you that information that you're seeking. Like, I, I I, I don't understand how people, you know, that have done these things don't come to these That's exactly yeah. what we're doing. And then it, <laughs> it's funny. It's so, like, what we were kind of mentioning before, it's so, com- like, common sense, but also insane from... Our right, cult, right. Like our it's cultural a, perspective, exactly of, of what we've grown up in, because too, Every you know, day. that's why I was like scared of it at first, and I think this is part of what I want to bring out in in other episodes when I was barely mentioning about being uh, Cali sober, where mm. where like I talk about like this kind of stuff to my cousins when I'm like drunk or whatever, and mm-hmm. they're and they're like, oh damn, you're crazy, but I'm thinking, yeah homie you're doing meth you're crazy (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> right. And, and like, but it's it's kind of funny because um, in Fruit of the Gods, Terrence um, brings up this thing about like white caffeine is kind of like more accepted than like weed because it makes you productive. It, it gets it, right. it, it makes you like get through your day. It makes you you know do menial tasks and like grind them out relatively fast versus if you're stone you're like just like why am i doing this i shouldn't be doing this <laughs> i'm doing yeah. other things i wouldn't do other things that are more interesting <laughs> like, and but it's kind of funny because going back to like my family and um i was talking about like how they're wild and 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 i mean like i have that kind of like same thing too it's like kind of funny because i think to talking culturally i think people are seeking what you get out of a classic mushroom experience when they think about like you know going and doing something crazy or whatever but it's funny because it's it's so crazy that like you have to like face yourself in order to get like the good stuff yeah <laughs> and there's no way around it and that's why i don't that's why it's like people don't do it yes <laughs> that's, that's the fear um, yeah, I think that's what, uh, you know, uh, weed helped me with a lot more with because uh, it helped me, I guess, figure out what I needed to figure out prior to taking, mm -hmm. you know, some deep psychedelics. Mm -hmm. So when I'm at least so far with the, the trips that I've had, it hasn't been like, you know, any any um, necessarily, even though there has been, you know, stuff that I definitely need to work on and I know these things. But it hasn't been like deep trauma that yeah, you know yeah. has been locked away for years. Like I, I pretty much know all my trauma, and I've worked yeah. throughout, you know, worked it out throughout the years. Yeah. Um, and I think again, marijuana has helped me with that. Oh yeah. Um, a lot. So yeah, it definitely is one of those things where it is necessary part of the experience. Um, but thankfully for me, I'm not. I don't necessarily need it. Um, and I can, I can, I can, you know, seek beyond that and go straight into what, you know, yeah. what I'm trying to actually it's get true, done yeah. and is establish a communication without having to necessarily, you know, go through years and years and years of <laughs> mental blocks because of some past trauma. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, no, but it is beautiful that these things do that. So, oh, yeah. you know, I'm, I don't want to knock anything like that because that is a necessary uh, part of the experience, I think people that definitely need it can can and i think use. that's definitely the culture that we live in right the the value proposition of psilocybin or whatever that it it actually with in combined with psychology you know like you know psychotherapy or whatever or some some type of follow-up therapy that it could help you you know form new habits mm. you know experience basically death and kind of be all right with it <laughs> in the, in the right, right circumstances right, yeah. you're like oh okay like oh my my individual self is just a drop in the whole ocean of consciousness mm. oh okay there's there's more things that you could tie yourself into um which i think is kind of interesting